Azerbaijan and Armenia began border delimitation. In accordance with the agreements reached on the outcomes of the 8th meeting of the State Commission on the delimitation of the state border between the Republic of Azerbaijan and the Republic of Armenia and the Commission of the Matters of Delimitation of the State Border and Border Security between the Republic of Armenia and the Republic of Azerbaijan, the expert groups of the countries started the clarification of coordinates based on geodetic measurements on the ground on the border between the Republic of Azerbaijan and the Republic of Armenia on April the 23rd, 2024. Armenia is beginning work on April the 23rd to delimit the border with Azerbaijan at the baganis vosk Pass section in the Tabush province. The Republic's Interior Ministry said the baganis vosk Pass motorway has been closed to carry out mine clearance work on adjacent territory and prevent citizens from entering adjacent mined areas for the purposes of ensuring their safety, the ministry said in a statement. Delimitation work is planned at the baganis vosk Pass section. We also inform that rumours claiming that some part of the sovereign territory of the Republic of Armenia will be passed over to Azerbaijan have nothing to do with reality. We stress that no changes along the Armenia-Azerbaijan contact line are planned. After the border demarcation, the border troops of Armenia will deal with protecting the border line. The statement reads, the Armenian government office said in a statement that pursuant to an agreement of the border delimitation commissions of both countries, a process began on April the 23rd, 2024 to determine coordinates based on geodesic measurements. Recall, Armenia has agreed to return the villages of Azerbaijan that were earlier controlled by Yerevan. As a result of the eighth meeting of the state commissions on the delimitation of the state border between Azerbaijan and Armenia, Armenia has agreed to return four villages of Azerbaijan that were under the occupation since the early 1990s. Russian peacekeeping contingent leaving the Karabakh region of Azerbaijan may be sent to Ukraine. As it is known, the Russian peacekeeping contingent has started to leave the Karabakh region of Azerbaijan. Yulian Robka, a military analyst of the Build publication, commented on the issue. According to him, there is some information that this contingent can be sent to the Ukrainian front. The total number of the contingent is about 2,000 military personnel. Russian peacekeepers are armed with dozens of new BTR-82A armoured personnel carriers which will be useful on the front where there is a severe shortage of Russian armoured vehicles. Azerbaijan's Defence Minister, Colonel General Zakir Hasanov, has issued relevant instructions related to the provision of necessary technical support for the transportation of personnel, ammunition and military equipment of the Russian peacekeeping contingent temporarily stationed in the country's Karabakh region and currently leaving the country. The instructions were issued at an official meeting held at the headquarters of the Azerbaijani Land Forces. The Russian peacekeeping contingent was supposed to be deployed in Nagorno, Karabakh until November 10, 2025. The Russian contingent was temporarily deployed there following a trilateral statement signed on November 10, 2020 between the leaders of Azerbaijan, Russia and Armenia. The size of the Russian contingent was limited to 1,960 soldiers, 90 armoured personnel carriers, 380 vehicles and special equipment, 4 Mi-8 and 4 Mi-24 helicopters of the Russian Aerospace Forces and 7 UAVs. Deployed in Karabakh in November 2020, the Russian peacekeepers were initially tasked with protecting the Armenian population following the cessation of military hostilities in the region. However, this mission encountered unforeseen challenges when, between September the 25th and October the 3rd, 2023, there was a mass exodus of the Armenian population from the area. The second factor involves more intricate geopolitical dynamics, including the intent of the Russian government to influence Armenian domestic politics. Russia aims to undermine Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan, who is inclined towards closer ties with Western countries, a stance perceived by the Kremlin as a threat. Concurrently, an analysis of Azerbaijan's foreign policy under President Ilham Aliyev highlights his efforts to maintain balanced relations with Russia. This strategy seeks to preserve stability and foster beneficial economic and military partnerships.
US aid will be a lifeline for Ukrainians, but it's unlikely to turn the tide of the war. Bloomberg. The United States approval of over 60 billion US dollars in aid will be a lifeline for Ukrainian soldiers in dire straits. However, according to the American publication Bloomberg, it's unlikely to turn the tide of the war. Much will depend on how quickly US assistance can get to the front line after the House of Representatives approved the military and economic assistance on Saturday. As the package was stalled for six months in Congress, Kyiv's military has grappled with an ever more acute shortage of ammunition and manpower while Kremlin forces press their advantage, Bloomberg said. Bloomberg cites Mykola Beliskov, a research fellow at the National Institute for Strategic Studies in Kyiv, stating that this aid will allow Ukrainian soldiers to rest a little and help them slow down the Kremlin's advance, conduct effective defense and minimize losses. However, according to the expert, greater assistance is needed to advance further. The question is whether there will be aid and what volume in 2025 and beyond as Putin's strategy is to wait it out. Beliskov said, Ukrainian ambassador to the United States, Oksana Markarova, stated that they had been working on the logistics of weapon delivery all this time. The Pentagon and our defense ministry didn't stop working daily together at finding weapons, identifying them and such packages are being prepared. Markarova said, it has also been reported that some equipment, likely including army tactical missile systems, could be delivered by the end of the week. However, analysts at the Institute for the Study of War believe that even if American aid arrives quickly, it will not begin to affect the situation on the front line for several weeks due to transport logistics. The frontline situation will therefore likely continue to deteriorate in that time, particularly if Russian forces increase their attacks to take advantage of the limited window before the arrival of new US aid, the analysts said.